What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Sunday, December 31st here in South Georgia, almost 2024, and by the time this video airs, 2023 will be over and done. And since 2024 is upon us now, I figure it'd be a great time to talk about resolutions while we have such a hard time keeping resolutions and talk about habits and how we can establish some good habits for the next year, specifically as it relates to gardening and growing our own food. So earlier today, as I'm scrolling through social media on my phone, I see all these people listing their resolutions for 2024, all the things that they're going to, you know, do better at or get better at. And there's kind of a common theme with all these resolutions that people are listing. The main theme is they're all kind of ambiguous. They just state some, you know, ambiguous goals, nothing real specific. And a lot of times there's way more goals there than is actually probably possible to accomplish. So I propose that instead of resolutions, we need new habits. And I actually just finished reading this book right here called Atomic Habits. Kind of looks like a self-help book, but it's not really. It more explains the psychology of human behavior, why we are such habitual creatures, and how we can establish good habits going forward. Really, really fascinating book. I highly recommend reading it. And a lot of the information in here it applies to what we're talking about with New Year's resolutions and stuff like that. So I've got four tips I'm gonna share with you that will help us all try and keep these resolutions, try and stick to our word, but better yet, help us establish some really good habits going forward that we can keep for the long term, not just for 2024. So tip number one is don't set abstract goals. Like I said earlier, looking on social media today, you see all these people listing abstract goal after abstract goal of what they're gonna try to achieve in 2024. Examples of this, people say, well, in 2024, I'm gonna exercise more, or I'm gonna eat healthier, I'm gonna be more kind to people, or I'm gonna you know, read my Bible more or pray more. None of these things state specifically what you're gonna do, it's just kind of some abstract ambiguous goal that says i'm going to do this more or you know try to do this more so tip number two which kind of ties into the first tip is set specific quantifiable goals so let me give you some examples here so instead of saying i'm gonna eat healthier in 2024 set a specific goal say i'm gonna eat greens three times a week in 2024 i'm gonna go out to eat only once a week in 2024 as opposed to two to three times a week because when we just say i'm gonna eat healthier who knows what that means that can mean something different for every single person out there my version of eating healthy might be a lot different than your version of eating healthy just depending on where we are in our lives so that's why we need to write down a specific goal with some kind of quantifiable measure it's a lot easier to stick to that and say yes we did that or no we didn't do it I'll give you another example. So instead of saying, I'm gonna exercise more in 2024, you need to write down specifically what you're gonna do. So say, I'm gonna go to the gym three times a week in 2024, and then you stick to that. That means if you skip the gym the first four days of the week, then you gotta go three days in a row. Here's another example that relates to exercising more, something that I personally do. I try to do 100 push-ups every day. Some days I do 150, 175. Some days I only do 100. If I'm busy throughout the day and I'm on the road a lot, can't really do my push-ups. That means at night I'm, you know, grinding, trying to get my 100 push-ups per day done. But that is a quantifiable goal. I wouldn't want to set a goal that said, I'm just going to try to do more push-ups this year. I need a number to go by there. Here's another example of an abstract goal versus a quantifiable goal. Instead of saying, I'm gonna be nicer, I'm gonna be more kind in 2024, you know, take a little sticky note, put it on your computer or your desk so you can see it 
right there every day all day and have that sticky note say something like i'm gonna make one person smile today or i'm gonna make two people smile today and that kind of gives you an idea of what you've got to do to meet that goal you've got to do two nice things or one nice thing whatever you write on that little sticky note there it's a lot easier to comprehend okay what i have to do to meet this goal than just saying i'm going to be more kind so now that we understand why we need to set specific quantifiable goals, tip number three is to set realistic goals. Don't set goals that you know good and well you're not going to be able to achieve. So if one of my resolutions or goals for 2024 was to eat healthier, I'm not going to write on my list that in 2024 I'm only going to eat fast food once a month. I know life gets busy you're on the road sometimes and sometimes you just gotta stop and get you a hamburger doesn't make you feel that great after you eat it but it's just something to kind of keep you going throughout the day i know it's pretty unrealistic to say i'm only going to do that once a month i need to set a realistic goal that i know i can actually achieve if my goal is to exercise more in 2024, I'm not going to write down that I'm going to go to the gym six or seven times a week. I know that's pretty unrealistic. I might write down I'm going to go to the gym four times a week or I'm going to go five times a week because I think I can do that on a regular basis. But if I do six or seven times a week, there's not going to be many weeks where I'm going to hit my goal. And back to the push-ups thing that I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to set a specific quantifiable goal to do 250 push-ups a day. I know I don't have that much time in the day to do 250 push-ups. I won't ever meet that goal and I'll end up being disappointed. So I need to put that number at something that can actually be done. So when we're writing down or setting these goals in the hopes of establishing some really good habits, we want to start small. We don't want to overachieve in the beginning. We want to start small and make baby steps until we establish these really good habits of eating healthier and exercising more. But we have to write down these little small steps that we can accomplish on the way until those goals are established as habits. And then tip number four, which I think could be the most important one, is to write it down. Hold yourself accountable by writing it down. So I'm a big believer in keeping a written calendar and a written task list for every single day. I know with technology now, it's really easy to keep a digital calendar or Google calendar on our phones. There's just something about writing it down and crossing it off. My wife keeps a digital calendar and um, it's funny, she'll tell me from time to time, you remember we got this coming up this week? And she's like, I put it on our Google Calendar and I always tell her, I said, if it's not in this book, it's not happening. So she has over time learned to go in my office and you know, find the date in my book here and write it down. And if it's in this book, it will happen. So here's my 2023 book. And I just got my 2024 one in the mail, so we'll start on that pretty soon. And I do hang on to these from year after year. I don't really know why, but I just do. Lots of different versions of these online. I really like this Moleskin brand right here. Just nice little book, holds up well throughout the year. So the reason I think it's very important to keep a book like this is because it holds you accountable and it keeps you honest. You can't write something down in here and cross it off unless you've done it. So as old school as it may seem in today's digital world, writing down your daily or weekly goals in a book like this and crossing them off when you complete them goes a long way to establishing good habits and actually being able to keep those resolutions. So when I'm doing 25 push-ups at a time, I write down 25 every time I do them within a day in my book here and then I count them up at the end of the day make sure I've done my 100 or 125 or 150 whatever that goal is at the beginning of each week I may go through here and write down the days I plan on going to the gym and I know I can't cross it off that day unless I actually went otherwise you know I've got to go another day and then I can cross it off so now let's take those four tips and talk about them specifically as they relate to backyard gardening and growing your own food. And I'll give you some examples of some quantifiable, realistic goals that you could set for 2024 to help you be able to better grow your own food. 
So let's start off with that awful ambiguous goal of I'm going to eat healthier in 2024. Instead, you may want to set a quantifiable, realistic goal that says I'm going to eat from my garden three times a week this year. And you don't have to get super complicated with it. It could be something as simple as coming out here and harvesting some of this lacinato kale and sauteing it in a pan with some sausage, calling that a meal. Or maybe you come out to your beds and cut a few heads of some beautiful lettuce you grew and throw together a salad with some other stuff you got in the kitchen. Or maybe you take some mustard greens, turnip greens, collard greens, cook these up, cook you a little bacon, cornbread, call it a meal. So it's not like everything for those three meals a week has to come from the garden. That's kind of unrealistic. But make the main highlight of those three meals a week come from your garden. That will make you eat healthier because you're eating the food you grew. It will also make you appreciate the work you put into your garden and help you establish some good habits all the way around. Maybe in 2024, you want to better learn how to preserve a lot of the food that you grow in your backyard garden. Well, you could make the mistake of defining some ambiguous goal like we talked about earlier. You could write down, I'm going to do better at preserving food this year. I'm going to can more this year. When in actuality, it's probably better to set a quantifiable goal. And that goal needs to be realistic. If you've never canned tomatoes in your life, don't say, I'm going to put 100 jars of tomatoes in the pantry this year. That's a lot of tomatoes to grow. That's a lot of canning to do. Maybe start with something simple like, I'm going to put 10 bags of corn in the freezer this year. Doesn't take a whole lot of space to grow enough corn to put 10 bags in the freezer. And freezing is a lot easier than pressure canning or hot water bath canning. So set something realistic in the beginning as you learn how to preserve your own food. Kind of work your way up to that 100 jars of tomatoes. Another goal you might have that I've heard a lot of our viewers state lately is that they want to learn how to use drip irrigation in 2024. They want to set up drip irrigation for the first time. Now, if you've got a 13 bed set up like mine and you've never used drip irrigation, it's probably going to be pretty daunting to rig up a system like we have here. But a more realistic, quantifiable goal would be to say, okay, I'm going to set up drip irrigation in one or maybe two of my raised beds, understand how it works, understand how to install it, and from there I can learn or determine how I would want to create an entire system for all my beds. Here's another great example of an ambiguous garden goal versus a realistic, quantifiable garden goal. So a lot of people will say, in 2024 I'm gonna do a lot better job at keeping the weeds under control in my garden. Well, that's kind of an ambiguous statement. At what level do we determine if we accomplish that or not? But here's what you can do. Take your little book, write down in there. Hey, four times a week, I'm going to go and spend 30 minutes uh, afternoon in the garden pulling weeds. So, you know, that keeps you accountable. you got to spend that 30 minutes pulling weeds. And if you do that, you will achieve that broader ambiguous goal. But... This is a way to keep you accountable, keep you on task, and make sure you do it. And I could go on and on with ideas for simple, realistic, quantifiable garden goals that you might have for 2024. And if you've got any good ideas, do put those in the comments below. Other ones I can think of just right off the top of my head, be planting a fruit tree. If you've wanted to add fruit trees for a while and just haven't gotten around to doing it, Write down specifically what kind of fruit tree you're going to plant. Make it happen. Maybe you've never tried growing determinate tomatoes before or hybrid tomatoes. Pick a variety. Write it down on a piece of paper that you're going to grow that variety. Make it happen. Now, I can't tell you how much your chances of success will improve by writing it down, but I can tell you it is significant. When you write it down and it's staring you in the face, all day every day and you know the only way you can honestly cross it off is to get out there and do it you'll do it and when you write it down enough you do it enough you mark it off your list enough it will eventually go from goal or resolution to long-term habit it'll be just like waking up in the morning making your bed feeding the dogs 
So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Happy New Year to everybody watching. As always, you can find these raised beds and a lot of the other products we use around here on our website at LazyDogFarm.com. And if you are looking in 2024 to take that plunge and start using drip irrigation, watch this video right here. This is when we set up our irrigation system for all these raised beds. Give you a lot of good ideas for what you might want to do for your system. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.